Hello, hello, beautiful soul. I am so excited to share another Ask the Author interview for our new book, The Top 10 Traits of Highly Resilient People. Today, I'm thrilled to bring to you one of my dear friends and colleagues from Iceland. Her name is Gegga. Well, we call her Gegga. Her full name is Helga Birgistotir. And Gega is a precious, precious soul. She is a nurse. She's been practicing for 36 years in Iceland. The last six years have been in the psychiatric hospital, but she's also an artist. She's the creator of this beautiful thing called Smiler and the creator of such beautiful artwork and sculptures. But her story in this book reveals some inner challenges that she's been working through her entire life that recently came to a head, literally, when her head and the rest of her body hit a rocky surface. She was working herself to the point of burnout and finally crashed. But she has recovered, or she's on her way to a full recovery, and she's gonna share with you what she learned from that crash. And actually, Gega says, that there is a gift in every crash, and she's had several of them to prove it. Enjoy the interview. Welcome, welcome, Gega Birgistotir. It is so wonderful to connect with you again. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very excited. Well, so I'm am I. Happy to be here. Oh, me too. I'm so grateful that once again, you are sharing your wisdom in one of our group books. Um, you have a lot of wisdom to share and um, some pretty funny stuff. Even though this, this book, um, sharing these stories about resilience can be somewhat heavy, you always add this little bit of humor when you're giving talks and when you're writing, and I love that about you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I could live without humor, you know. It's, it's a lifesaver. It's my medicine. Yeah, yeah, I get that a lot. And yeah. it, it sounds like you have had many opportunities in your life where you have needed some humor and medicine. Um, I know that one of your sayings is that there's a gift in every crash. In fact, I shared that message in one of my TED Talks when uh, I shared with the audience how you experienced quite a crash on your bicycle and used humor and lightness to actually heal your face so that you could go to um, a class reunion just not even a week later. Yes, of course. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you, you are um, quite a gift to the world, and I know that you say that we're all um, gifts. But I, what I'd like to start with is... In this particular book, in the, the Top 10 Traits of Highly Resilient People, you tell us about another crash that you experienced. And this one was both physical as well as mental and emotional. Um, tell me a little bit about what led you to you know, this burnout and this crash. <clears throat> well, it uh, could be a long story, but I would keep, <laughs> keep it short. Uh, I just, uh, I didn't listen to myself, you know, I, I didn't walk the way I talked to others, you know, follow your hearts, you know, follow your dreams, you know, be true to yourself, take care of your body, nurture yourself. I didn't do it. I just, I'm codependent in my, you know, genes, <laughs> I would say almost. And uh, there was some difficulties in my life. My daughter was sick. Uh, I was working was a lot of uh, pressure there mm. uh, and I was a nurse there and I was I'm a kind of workaholic mm. and it's so difficult for me to say no to people if I'm asked so I said yes to all the extra shift I was asked to do so I was working 16 hours day after day hardly hardly a day off for weeks and I crashed. At the same time I crashed, my daughter was at the mental hospital too. Mm. And I was her caretaker for you know, 24 seven, you could say. Um, so it was too much. 
And I found also, which is very important for me, and I learned that that I'm if I'm not uh, if I'm not following my heart in that sense that I'm doing something that I don't feel right. For example, mm-hmm. I was not. I didn't agree with all the treatment my patients got. Mm. And I was, we, we use a lot of, well, medicine at the hospital. And there was so little time for other things like talks and meditation or using arts as it has been before, you know, when I started there six years ago, uh, but which was my best uh, tool mm-hmm. to connect to my patient and I loved it you know you know painting and talking meditating using all kinds of stuff I've learned uh, for example the work by Byron Katie which is a very good technique to mm-hmm. release stressful thoughts and beliefs there was no time for that in the system anymore so instead of me going away and quick I just kept on working mm. I needed to save the world, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. And so you experienced right there in the hospital, um, you write about this in your chapter in the book, that you literally could feel that your body was not right and mm. one of your colleagues checked your blood pressure yeah. and it was sky high, so high that they wanted to send you home. <gasps> yeah, and still I didn't listen. You know, say, okay, well, I, I rest for a day or two, and then I'm back. I need to save the world, you know. I need to be important. I just couldn't uh, cope with myself in all that stress. It, you know, it's like you 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 lose conscious or yeah or clear thoughts, and so I was just I went on the workaholic, and I was I had high blood pressure. I had very bad, what do you call it? Um, Chest um, pain? Uh, heartbeat and pain and pain over my body. I could hardly think after four o'clock in the day. I was totally exhausted. Didn't for, I, I forgot things and, you know, I felt anxious for the first time in my life. Wow. Woke up, you know, uh, it was a new experience good experience though (laughs) but even with all those symptoms it literally took you falling on your back before you would actually take a break so take us to that day because you were out uh, in the Icelandic countryside somewhere right yeah I was I had been uh, sent home because of my blood pressure and uh, my physical uh, symptoms uh, and I was going to rest for a while, but it was too hard for me. I just experienced me as a, oh my God, what will people think of me? I'm like a yeah. fake. I should be so strong, you know. Yeah. I'm the smiler woman and all that kind of stuff that I should, I was not doing well enough. So came to my mind that oh, the only, I could only rest if I was endured. Oh my God. Take care of what you wish for. If you were injured. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was walking one day. I was walking on the countryside. It was 11 minus degrees. Freezing cold. Freezing cold. And I was alone walking uh, without a telephone. And I was having a pee. So I had to take off my you know, heavy warming clothes. And then I slipped. Oh, my gosh. Uh, on a cliff and I slipped and I just oh my god I'm falling and I felt uh, maybe three meters um, back and on a stone you know in the on the beach wow. rocky stones. it was amazing how, how you know <laughs> when I was lying there with my you know pain trying to scream and knowing that nobody would hear, and it was always dark, almost dark. I was grateful. Anyway, what was, were you grateful for? I was grateful for uh, get rid of my guilt. Hmm. 
being a resting home. How sick is that? Yeah. Yeah, how sick is that? That lying there and saying, thank you, God, you heard me. Of course, I was not asking for it, you know. Not yeah, but... Consciously. Mm -hmm. But it was better to be injured uh, physically than having that guilt. Wow. So it was a very, very, very big lesson for me to see how really far away I was from loving myself truly. Mm -hmm. you know? All parts of me was, it was shocking to see the shame, blame, uh, responsibility and all the codependent symptoms while well, they were blossoming in me. And so I saw it as a gift. Wow. And so you got yourself out of there. You were able to somehow crawl and get yourself back a kilometer to, to where your friends were. And then you found out that you weren't just bruised and a little shaken. You'd actually broken your arm. Yeah. Totally broken, very badly broken. And I had to go to surgery and wired my, you know, my arm is wired now still and I uh, some ribs were also fractured and not maybe badly but little fracture and my hat had hit a stone and I was oh my god <laughs> but I, I didn't even go to the hospital until two days later oh my gosh how sick is that so you can see that I'm I'm describing a state where where I'm really deep in my codependency, codependency symptoms, uh, not respecting my needs at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the saver place, you know, I just need to save. And I, I was so scared people would see me as fake if I, if I would do it. Yeah. If you needed to take a break or yeah, yeah. recover. So yeah. you say there's a lesson in every crash is that what you learned that the all of the signs and symptoms that you were ignoring you should have paid attention to or, or what was your biggest lesson in your recovery my biggest lesson was that uh, i i need to love all parts of me i need to love also my body you know i was you know when i was walking with my arm like that and freezing and uh, I was walking back to the house, I was saying, I'm not my body, I'm a spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm not my body and, and I'm just a spirit to keep me, you know, going and don't give up. But later I thought, well, how stupid is that? You know? And I realized I always ignored my body. Mm. Gave my body not pleasure, I gave it not enough good food. I was working too much. It was like it was just some tool. So I realized, you know, we, we I say, I'm a, I'm a spirit, mind and body. But the body has all been forgotten, you know. So yeah. So that's part of me too. And uh, now I start practicing this true self-love by, you know, for example, when I wake up in the morning, I, I give myself a warm hug and I tell myself how much I love me. And I, I look at the photo of me when I was just three years old. And I thanks for my life. And I even thanks for my wrinkles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big step. <laughs> Well, let's 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 explore a little bit of that. This picture that you have of you when you were um, a young, a young girl. Part of what you say has been really helping you with your codependency and learning to just ask for help and be vulnerable. You say a big part of that came from doing some inner child work while doing a, a, a plant medicine ceremony. So tell me about what it was like to reconnect with that inner Gega. Oh my God, it was, uh, I can hardly describe it. It was so beautiful. Mm. It was so powerful. 
I didn't know she existed. Wow. And then she just came out with so powerful emotions and the emotions were mixed with, you know, love, anger, because I have always ignored her. Mm. The, the, the desire to be loved and and have permission to love who, whoever she wants to love. And she, yeah, it was really powerful and I was crying for, for hours. I was mm. crying for hours. And, and she she didn't go away. She she really she was screaming. She was crying. She was asking me, and she was talking to my parents too. And some anger from my childhood came out also. Yeah. And uh, I asked those little girl in my uh, two days later what I could do for her. Mm. So I kept contact. And I had a photo on the table, and I turned on a light to and I said, what can I do? And she had three wishes. She, she asked me to take care of her, stop talking badly about her, and to love her. Mm. It was very simple. And what is to take care of? You know, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that I, I need to work 20 hours a day and Stay with the world, or yeah, all the shit I've been doing, and following my dreams is one of my messages. I want to tell the world, you know, you should always follow your dream. It keeps you healthy. It keeps you joyful, and and it's the most helpful for the world if you follow your dreams, use your gifts, and I hadn't been cheating on myself. I had my great passion, which is, uh, my most passion is my Smiler project, and it was just on hold. I put it on hold. Well, let's talk about that, because most people around the world have seen me wearing the Smiler, and I'm always encouraging people to get a hold of this little magic wand. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, Gega is an amazing artist. You can see the artwork behind her and around her, as well as this beautiful artistic and magic wand, the Smiler. So tell us about you know why you created Smiler, why you neglected it as a project, and what are your hopes for the Smiler project going forward? Mm -hmm. I created it... Uh... First and foremost, to remind myself and others that we are all big, powerful creators within. There is no God uh, punishing God with power outside you, you know, who leaves you if you don't behave, you know. You have it within the love, the creative power within. So it's a reminder of that. And you do, do it with your thoughts, uh, words, and actions as we know, and uh, it all also reminds us that there is a gift in every class, as I said, and it's very, it's very necessary to, to notice that because it, it can help you relax you know, when something awful is happening. And if you know really there is some gift, gift in it, even though I don't see it yet, you can relax and trust. And when you see the gift, you get proofs that God is good or whatever you call the creative power of life. You know, I call it God. And you can even change the word God for, for life. And then you know life is always on your side. So I'm, I'm quicker now to see the gift. That's why I can say, oh, thank you, God. <laughs> when I was lying on those rocky stones, you know, because I knew something would come out of it. You know, it was just a foolish way, but I will learn, hopefully. So there is a gift in every crash, and, and it helps me relax and trust God, trust the life. It's always on my side. And other message is, uh, is to follow your dream. As I also mentioned before, to follow your dream, then you shine the most, uh, you're happier. And when we don't do it, 
as I, you know, as my story tells, you get sick. So simple. Mentally, physically, something, you know, goes wrong with your body. Because it's first and foremost that you need to be in your true self, follow your true bliss, your inner smiler, as I call it. That you can stay, you know, healthy and shining and your system is working well. I don't want to have my stress system controlling my body anymore. So, and I, hopefully, I'm, I'm, I've used it as, I've done it uh, as necklets now. I have to say, I, well, I made it because I heard the quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, if you smile five times a day for no reason, you can change your life in 90 days. Wow, that's, that's big news. Mm. And, uh, and I made this uh, necklace to support me doing that because it's difficult to smile if something awful is happening. You know, when my mm. boyfriend left me, I didn't smile. <laughs> and I, I used to do it as a necklace. This is the original. It's in porcelain and silver. Do you want me to show it how I use it? Yes, of course. <laughs> and it forces you to smile. It forces me to smile and science says even when you fake a smile, your body produces happy hormones. And people are laughing and everything turns to be, turn out, yeah, everything's be better. Uh, I hope I can, yeah, I want to make it in other uh, versions too. Uh, I don't, some of them are secret. Okay. But I have written a book about it. And so the philosophy is, is most important for me. This is just the, the helping tool, you know, it's, it's the, instrument of joy as I call it so the guy who spoke the quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, his name is Neil Donald Walsh and uh, it was on workshop with him in England many years ago which I heard that quote and it was the same day as the financial crash was in Iceland and at that workshop I was shocked because I, I didn't have, I hadn't paid the cost. And that guy who was, you know, the manager there came to me and said, you don't have to pay a penny. So I got a free workshop for a whole week with delicious food and in a beautiful countryside in England for free. Just because the bank in Iceland had crashed and we were on the news that, that day. So there's a gift in every crash you know everybody felt so sorry for me <laughs> so it's a gift in every crash and that's the then it that's the time when the idea mm. came mm -hmm. I had already made it some years ago but it was kept in a drawer mm -hmm. so I'm endless thankful for Neil Donald Walsh to spoke those these words but did not talk yeah me too yeah. so i i'm assuming that you've learned your lesson that now that the cast is off of your arm and you're able to go back to work are you setting better boundaries i mean that's one of the the most important things that we have to do for self-care have you learned to say no i'm practicing to being a yes woman and and that means, of course, uh, when I want to say yes to myself, I might need to say no to others. Yes. And all my choices have to give me true yes in my heart. So I'm practicing. I'm not, you know, graduated. <laughs> but, but I'm better. I'm better at it. Yeah. Good. Thanks, God. Yes. And uh, learning about boundaries, I'm, I'm still in my recovery journey. Mm -hmm. I'm taking classes in meditation and I, I go see bathing and 
I've changed my, I, I think more better of what I eat, for example. I dance a lot. Mm -hmm. dance queen, you know. Oh, yes, I've seen your, your dancing videos on Facebook. <laughs> queen, young, sweet only, 59, I say. Yeah. Uh, I love dancing on the street and whatever I hear, great music. And that's my biggest medicine. Awesome. So, well, Gaga, thank you so very much for sharing your story in this book. Everyone, you should grab a copy of the top 10 traits of highly resilient people so that you can also um, discover even more about this crash that she had and how her inner child healing journey went. You can also get your own Smiler. They're made in, um, as she said, the original in porcelain. This one we've got made out of tin. And there's some plastic resin ones that you'll find at smiler.is. And if you're interested in some of the beautiful artwork that you see behind Gega and on my wall, you can visit gega.is for more of her beautiful artwork. Thank you again, my friend. I'm so, so grateful for our connection. Thank you. I was really, really honored. I have to. Can, can I add something? Okay. Can I add something? Because you asked me what I was doing to heal myself. And I'm practicing giving me more pleasure. So I... This book. Ooh. Wrote <laughs> once. Now I take it re very seriously. <laughs> and I even, even, I'm even going on some Tantra workshop. Well, well, well. January workshop. Well. My God, I, 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 I thought I would never dare to do that. But I live just once, so why not? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, enjoy that and enjoy the 21 day program that goes along with that book. That will definitely boost your pleasure quotient. Thank you again, my dear friend Gaga. Sending you much, much love. Thank you. The honor is mine. All right, there you have it, my friends. Remember that you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love. <laughs>